Hi there, my name is Caleb, and I am making my dream game about this little guy traveling across dangerous barren lands filled with rogue robots with nothing but his trusty instrument. In the last devlog, I showed you how this project started off and what my plans are for the future. I mentioned that I was struggling with creating the environment for the game as I wasn't very happy with how the wall tiles were turning out. And to be honest, starting to doubt my ability as an artist. So for the past month, I've been on a quest to solve this issue and to finally conquer the mountain of environmental art. But sorry for spoiling the progress, but the final product out of this past month is just this piece of mock-up art. But I still thought this devlog was worth making as I learned quite a valuable lesson. Let me explain. Okay, so before I show you why or how I got to the state of this project, I want to explain why I'm so obsessed with getting the environment right. And there's three main reasons to this. The first is the fact that the environment takes up quite a large portion of the screen. If you remove the characters and the UI, you're pretty much just left with the environment, especially in 2D games, where you can't really see the objects up close. So making up for this screen space is pretty crucial. Obviously, there are some exceptions to this where you leave it minimal due to the casual nature of the game, but this leads to my next point. The environment is a great way to communicate story to the player. These minimalist games are great and all, but it's no Hollow Knight. Having a deep lore and world can create very memorable experiences. One of the best ways to deliver on this is through the environment. The reason it took me so long to beat Hollow Knight is because I was completely immersed in the world finding intricate details and little secrets within the lore. And this is something that I would love to try and replicate within my game. The final reason is that I'm completely obsessed with tile sets. Something about them from their blocky nature, contrasting with how detailed they can really get, brings this constrained freedom for an artist like myself. And this is something that I really thrive with. Having constraints, but at the same time complete control, like for example participating in a game jam, where you can create a completely brand new game with the constraint of a theme, I find really enjoyable. So in conclusion, I really wanted to get these tile sets and the overall environment right, because it's one of those tasks which, if I get right, I can prove to myself my ability as an artist. But visual barriers are not the only problem I was faced with. For many years, indie game developers have been faced with the challenge of creating dynamic tile sets, which change due to the environment around them. With the procedural generation, nothing can be foreseen. Level designers are of no use in these dangerous waters. For only the gods of RNG can help us now. So many algorithms, so many barriers, so many suggestions within the comment section of my last video. But which shall I choose? Shall I go down the dangerous and unknowing path of wave function collapse? Shall I make my own rule tile system? Or shall I carry on with the enemy that is Unity's built-in rule tile system? Oh. Jokes aside, creating these tiles to dynamically change depending on how they're placed was something that I was a little stuck on. So in the last video, I asked you guys if you had any suggestions, and there were a ton and really good ones as well. But there was one that really stood out. Basically, I showed this video in my last video, which was a tutorial on how to create custom tile data in Unity. And the guy who made the video posted a comment saying how he could give me a free version of this Unity package he made, which could potentially fix the problem. Which is just so cool. The fact that I have a community which is able to sacrifice their hard work to help me is amazing. If you don't know about the one and only Vihan, he's a legend. He makes some great tutorials tailored towards Unity developers, so if you're a Unity developer yourself, I recommend checking some of his stuff out. So with this new package, I had cleared this barrier quite easily. I haven't quite dived into the package yet, so that will be the next thing I will be doing. Okay, so now it's finally time to make these tiles. The tile sets I had at the time, I didn't really like very much. So instead of trying to fix them up, 
I restarted with a new empty canvas. And I did this a lot while trying to make these tiles, by the way. So you're going to see quite a few iterations of these tiles. My inspiration behind the environment at the time was natural barren wastelands, sort of like a desert. However, this again changed quite a lot. You can probably tell that I'm not very good at sticking to an idea. However, I recently saw the new Dune movie and this brought a lot new found motivation to jump into this kind of world. So I'm definitely going to be experimenting with that a bit more. But nonetheless, I had to start somewhere. So I just started to experiment with single tiles, especially with the colors. I'd pure F to the side where I kept my inspiration and reference. The inspiration came a lot from Scourgebringer. So I really wanted to try and replicate their vibrant style, which meant getting the colors just right. But still, I wasn't very happy with how the tiles were turning out. I decided instead of focusing on the color, I would just try to get the form and details of the tiles right. So I decided to draw out some stone textured walls as the desaturated tones helped me better focus on my priorities. And looking back at this now, I think it doesn't look that bad, but my stubborn head decided to restart once again and go for something a little different. And I retried so many times. Once I found something I didn't like about it, I would scrap it and restart. And as you might have concluded, this was leading to nothing. So in the midst of my foggy head, I decided to blame it on the colors in the hope to find a conclusive palette on Lospec. But when I tested it out in a mock-up, I didn't like any of them. And this is where things got really unbearable. It felt like everything I was making was turning out to be pretty dull and amateur. Sure, it looked okay and probably decent enough for the game I was trying to make, but for an artist, it was not something that I was willing to be proud of. And this began to lead me down a path of doubting myself as an artist. What I was experiencing is what many people call art block, which is either when you're just completely unmotivated to create anything, or when you try to create something, you end up feeling unsatisfied with your artwork. Now, this doesn't just happen. This had to come from something. So I set out on trying to find what was making me feel unsatisfied and came to the conclusion that it was this little square in the bottom right hand side of my screen. The very thing I thought was crucial to create something amazing was the very reason I wasn't creating something amazing, my inspiration. Having these amazing pieces of inspiration in the corner of my eye kept myself from admiring my own artwork and instead caused me to compare it. I was falling into a hole, a deep hole, a hole of shame, fear, but this gave me power. Yes, great power, and with great power comes great responsibility. So I ultimately decided to close the window, put on some Studio Ghibli jams, and create this final piece of environmental mock-up purely from my own imagination. I decided to draw out just a very standard environment with just a simple grassy area. And I've gotta say, having nothing to compare your artwork to is pretty refreshing. Creating this mock-up brought so much joy as I was finally feeling happy with what I was creating. And in the end, I was. So, yep. That's it, you just watched an entire month's worth of dedication and hard work. But that is the truth. Sometimes you're faced with these barriers and you just kind of have to get over them. But before you go, I just want to say thank you so much for the support on my last devlog. I was hoping for maybe around 4,000 views at most, so it's pretty cool to see that I was very wrong. I've had so many great conversations with you guys in the Discord server, and of course replying to your really encouraging comments. If you're sad the video's over though, be sad no more, cause you can listen to a podcast which I was on, hosted by the Ramblecast. But seriously, these guys are very cool and you should go and give them a listen. Oh, and one more note before I go, I have exams coming up, so I might not upload another video for a little bit. So, wish me luck. And with that said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.